You know, everybody's afraid of the IRS, and no wonder. They can make your life a living hell if they want to. That's why it's so important that they play it straight, that they don't play favorites, that they don't play politics. Well, back in the years leading up to Barack Obama's reelection in 2012, the IRS did play politics. It intensely scrutinized conservative organizations, especially if they had the words T and party in their title, and all but refused to grant them tax-exempt status. At the same time, the IRS freely granted such status to liberal organizations. Why would they do this? To give Barack Obama and his liberal allies the advantage in the upcoming election. And who ordered it? Well, Lois Lerner was the head of the exempt organizations unit of the IRS. She ordered it. But who above her told her to do it? And did it go all the way to the White House? We'll never know. Because she destroyed the evidence, then took the fifth, and then the Obama Justice Department refused to prosecute her and find out the answers to these important questions. In many ways, this is a lot like what Hillary Clinton did. She destroyed the evidence. Evidence of her emails was sought by the FBI and by congressional committees. Rather than comply, she had her emails destroyed, and she lied about it. She even had the devices that stored the emails, multiple Blackberries and iPads, destroyed, some with a hammer. Yet the Obama administration, Justice Department, refused to prosecute her, too. So, Mr. Commissioner, where do you come in? Well, when the selective targeting of conservative groups by the IRS story broke, President Obama feigned outrage, said the targeting was inexcusable, and declared that we needed, quote, new leadership that can help restore confidence going forward, unquote. So President Obama brought you in uh, to head the IRS, supposedly to clean up the mess. Arguably, Commissioner Koskinen, you made matters worse. How? Well, you testified before congressional committees on multiple occasions. You made a number of important statements before Congress, which turned out to be completely false, even though you were under oath. For example, in referring to Lois Lerner's emails, you stated, quote, uh, since uh, the start of this investigation, every email has been preserved. Nothing has been lost. Nothing has been destroyed, unquote. This turned out to be completely untrue, of course. Lerner had tens of thousands of emails destroyed, and when you learned of this, rather than inform Congress, you failed to notify Congress for four months. Why in the world did you wait four months? Uh, actually, I waited two months. I was advised of this uh, situation in April, and the reason I waited, because I instructed people we needed to find as many of the emails from that period of the hard drive crash as we could. We found and produced 24,000 Lois Lerner emails from the period of her hard drive crash. She did not destroy information thereafter. We produced another 50,000 emails, so the investigators, all six of them, had 78,000 Loris Lerner emails from the period of 2009 to 2013. Well, I would submit that you had a duty to inform Congress immediately when you learned that, but let me move on because I've would, only no, got no, a No, no, and I would agree. I, I have said that in retrospect, if I had it to do over again in April, I would have contacted and advised Congress immediately. Right. Uh, there was no, the delay didn't change any investigation, but I can understand the aggravation it caused in some areas, and if I had to do again, I would actually advise the Congress that the hard drive, we, I knew the hard drive had crashed and had been advised of that. We were now going to try, as we did, to produce all the emails we could from that period, and we actually produced 24,000. Thank you. Let me move on. Similarly, after you learned of the destruction of Lois Lerner's emails, you testified that the IRS went to great lengths to try to resurrect her emails uh, by other means. Uh, this, too, turned out to be false. Uh, you and the IRS did very little to recover uh, those destroyed emails. In fact, experts testified that there were six ways the IRS could have tried to reacquire the emails. You failed to even try five of the six techniques. Uh, you failed to look at the IRS's own backup tapes. You failed to look at the server. You failed to look at the backup server. You failed to look at the loaner laptop. And you even failed to look at Lois Lerner's BlackBerry. Uh, so you really did very little to comply uh, with that. Uh, let me, my time's running out, so let me just say this. Um, what really makes me mad about this whole sorry episode uh, is that the IRS subpoenas information from taxpayers all the time. And if the average taxpayer exercised the same lack of cooperation that the IRS uh, displayed in this matter, that taxpayer would be in a world of trouble. 
that taxpayer would undoubtedly have been prosecuted, likely convicted, and likely would have spent time behind bars. But in this case, it was the Obama administration's powerful IRS that got caught with its hand in the cookie jar. And you circled the wagons, and clammed up, and you took the fifth, and you destroyed evidence, and betrayed the country. Uh, and most sadly, uh, got away with it.